One of the biggest improvements in Sapphire version 8 is the Builder. The Builder is um, a new interface that allows us to combine the Sapphire effects in any way that we want to actually build our own transitions and effects, build our own filters. So let me give you a very practical real world example of why you would use the Builder in your timeline. Now I'm gonna keep this pretty basic. I go into greater depth in the version eight new features tutorial. So you check that out if you wanna know more about how you can utilize the Builder. But on a very basic level, we can use the Builder to create a custom filter or a custom look. So in this particular clip in my timeline, timeline, you notice that I have, obviously some filters are applied to this, quite a few filters as a matter of fact, and I did it to create a look, to create a, a custom look on this footage. So let's just look and see how many we have stacked up here. Um, from the top to the bottom, I've got a vignette, I've got vintage color three strip, that's from the stylized category, vintage color three strip, we've also got a vignette, I've got a glow from lighting. I've got a glint also from lighting. And then on top of that, we've got, I believe it's hue, saturation, brightness. Yes, hue, saturation, brightness. So one, two, three, four, five different filters stacked on top of one another, nested on this clip to create a look. Now, if you were working on a show and this was a look that you were using consistently over and over again, it would be a serious pain in the butt to have to stack all of these different effects every single time you want to use them. Even if you had to do it in the filler and over and overcut it on a, on a layer on top in the filler, it still is more processor intensive and more time intensive. Um, whenever you get into wanting to transition between two clips, stacking the look on top of the filler doesn't always work. So this is where the this is where the builder is terrific. All right, so here is the unaffected clip with no filters on top of it. And let's use the builder to create that similar look with just a single um, with just a single filter. So what you're going to do is in your effect palette, you're going to go to builder and grab S effect. So we're creating our own effect. Create, go to S effect, go into effect mode, and in your effect editor, click on edit effect. Okay, the builder interface loads up. And over here on the left-hand side, we have all of the Sapphire uh, filters. On the right-hand side, we have our inspector where we can change our parameters. Um, this is our source footage, and then this is our node tree right here. So we've got our source, and we've got a result. And everything that we do to this image, we're going to stick in between into our node tree. So we started out with a little hue, saturation, brightness. I'll just type in hue, there it is. Now there's a couple different ways you can add this. You can just double click on it or you can drag it in. So now I add my hue, saturation, brightness. And um, you might wanna rename it so that in your effect palette, um, it'll show up as whatever you rename it. So I'll go color correction. Everything that I add here in the node tree is going to show up in my effect palette over here. So I want to make sure that whatever I have, whatever um, I add to my node tree makes sense whenever I move it over to my effect palette because I'll still have the ability to tweak and keyframe all of these different parameters. Which brings me to my next point. When we start stacking a bunch of these different effects, we're going to get a lot of different parameters in our um, effect palette, in our um, uh, effect editor, excuse me. And we might not need all of those different parameters. So we have the option over here in the builder to turn those different, turn on only the parameters that we think we're going to use. So in the case of hue, saturation, brightness, we've renamed it to color correction so that when we get over here into the effect editor, it'll say color correction. Um, Let's only turn on the ones we think we're going to use. So I, I usually start by turning them all off and then um, we'll keep on um, hue shift, saturation, brightness, offset darks, and we'll keep scale colors off. Have preserved Luma checked. Um, let's bump up our saturation. Let's just play with the hue shift a little bit. And then uh, maybe we can crush our blacks a little bit by offsetting darks. Okay, so this will now become our default setting for this effect that we're creating. All right, um, the next thing we put on there was, I think I put a little bit of glint. Okay, and I can double click or I can just drag it on over. 
All right. And um, let's bring our brightness down a hair. Let's uh, play with our hue shift until we find something that we like. And bump up our threshold. Play with your size details. I mean, not so much blur on there. Um, there's a lot of parameters on this one, so I'm going to turn them all off. I want to be able to change the brightness, the hue, um, threshold is important. Uh, size, do we like that? Keep so we'll be able to adjust the size. That's good. We'll keep all the different size details turned off. Bump up Y. It'll just be diagonal for now, I guess. Okay, and I don't think there's any others on here that we want to turn on. All right, not a problem. Great. Next thing I had was a glow. Okay, definitely going to want to turn up our threshold here. Maybe turn our glow width down. And I like to be able to change my color, but let's go for that electric blue again. All right. Looking pretty good. Turn off all my parameters except the ones I want to change. So brightness, color, threshold. I'm going to keep the glow width off because I like the way that looks. I can change my blending mode here. I like that. I didn't have that on the last one. I actually really like the way that looks. So I'm going to keep that on. Only thing is I think I'm going to bring my brightness down that we're doing the add blending mode. Okay. Uh, next, let's do a three strip. Vintage three strip. I like the way that looks. The amount is really all I'm going to want to be able to. So you're, we're going to hand this effect over to our editors for them to apply to our show. So you you don't want to give them too much ability to um, to tweak it too far beyond what we've already determined uh, should be the look for our show. So um, we'll, we'll have the, if, uh, the amount parameter turned on and maybe the brightness parameter. No, leave brightness at one. So keep that off. Okay, so I like the way that looks. Bump up saturation a little bit. Okay. And then finally, we topped it off with a vignette. Okay, great. I made the vignette sort of a pink color. All right, and I'm going to uncheck all my parameters. Play with your radius and rotation. I also blurred the inside. And I'll make that a little bit less opaque. And I changed the blending mode. I think I changed the blending mode to add. Yeah. So that's pretty cool. Um, we can say we our editors can have the option of changing the radius, the center, the rotation, the edge softness. Okay, so there we go. We've created our look. There it is. All I have to do is click on OK. And now you see it refreshes and we've created our own custom look for this clip and all it is in our effect editor is a single effect and we can save this as a preset we can drag this effect into our bin and we can reuse it later on and then let me point out remember how we renamed that node that hue, hue saturation brightness we remade, renamed it to color correction and that's why it shows up here as color correction um, so this is good it makes it more intuitive um, so that you know exactly what these parameters are are uh, are referring to or what um, uh, what filter they apply to. So color correction makes more sense than hue, saturation, brightness. Here's glint. Notice how only the parameters that I had checked are showing up under glint, glow, all these other ones as well. And of course, I can always go in and still keyframe all of this if I want to and change it and tweak it based on the clip. So that's how you can use the builder to combine effects to create your own custom look. But you don't want to stop there because you can actually, if you can dream up the effect, if you can dream up a particular kind of filter, then you say, oh boy, I really wish that I had this in the Sapphire tool set. There's a very high likelihood that using the builder, you can make it yourself. So we have S effect for creating our own custom filters using the builder. And we have S transition for creating our own custom transitions. So when would I want to do this? Well. 
Here's a perfect example of a transition that I've been using for years that I learned from another editor. Uh, let me play it for you. Look here in video track four. It's this guy right here. As chaos. Organized chaos. So it's this um, kind of shaking the picture, Luma effect there, brightening it up. It's kind of a neat jarring transition uh, to shake the picture. Well, this is great. As you can see, whenever I zoom in here, it's actually it's actually composed of the submaster, and then inside of that, I've got a couple of 3D warp, um, 3D warps with a color effect on top of that. So this is just built using the the Avid uh, effects. But um, since we can now make our own custom effects with Sapphire version eight, I can create recreate this same transition and even make it better. The first thing I'm going to do is let's collapse, let's nest all of this together because we're going to put S transition on the edit point instead of in the filler. So I want to make sure that all of this media here is nested together. Okay. And then let's lift this out of there. And it was about six frames or so. Drag your S transition, put it on there. You can see it just dissolve. It defaults to a dissolve. All right. Go to your effect editor, and I think I had this set to eight. So let's go eight frames, and then edit effect, and it's going to open up the builder. Now you'll notice here. Um, you'll notice here. I've got my from footage, the A side of the edit my two footage is the B side of the edit, and then in between it defaults to S dissolve. Um, now, in this drop down menu, I actually have all of the different all of the different transitions under the transition category at my disposal. So the wipes, the dissolves, the film roll, they're all there. So one of these dissolve transitions is actually dissolve shake. So um, since we were shaking the image in my in the transition that I created using the um, Avid effects, this is a good place to start. So dissolve shake. Let's uh, sort of tweak this to replicate what I had built before. So the first thing that I might do to do this is to, um, I think I turned the, let's have the motion blur off. There was no motion blur. Um, and I don't believe that it was shaking on the Y axis at all. So um, I'm gonna turn my Y frequency or Y amplitude all the way down and turn my X amplitude up higher and X frequency up higher. All right. And then let's look at the Z axis and turn my Z frequency up higher and amplitude up higher. It's getting there, maybe a little bit more. Cool. I like it. Um, yeah, that looks nice and jarring. Gets a good shake. All right. So um, now we need to get that sort of Luma effect on there. How can we do that? Well, there's a few ways. Um, I talked about doing this very same thing with S Glow in one of the earlier uh, tutorials. Uh, but Glow just seems so simple. We've got the entire Sapphire tool set at our disposal. So let's do something a little bit more fun. So let's check out flash bulbs. Haven't talked about flash bulbs yet, but flash bulbs are a lot of fun. You can create realistic looking flash bulb effect. Um, let's bump up this brightness. Come on now and get more flashes on there. Let's say 10. Where's my brightness? Uh, the brightness was turned down. Uh, 10. Let's see how that looks. Oh yeah. Okay. Well, this is fine. Those I'm not real fond of the way those flash bulbs look. So let's go into our preset browser again. Load preset. Okay. And let's find a preset that looks more realistic. Maybe by typing in realistic. Here we go. Realistic flash bulbs. So these will be uh, loaded in your version of Sapphire. These will be these will be included. So this one looks pretty good. Let's do that. No, oh, I like this. That's good. I like that. Okay. So load that up, pretty good. I want more bulbs though. So like 10, let's see how that, oh yeah. So I got lots of bulbs. 
Um, also, let me point out that um, in this particular in this particular plugin for flash bulbs, we actually have down here scale source. So watch what happens whenever I scale source. It makes the background brighter, just like just like I would get if I were um, adding a glow and taking all the glow width down. It would look very similar, but there's a problem here. Notice that it's really bright at the beginning too. So I need to keyframe that scale source parameter. No, no worries. Um, this drop down menu over here is how we can do our automatic animation. So we don't actually have to do any keyframing. So um, we can ramp up and down from one or from zero. We can start at a high number and ramp down to zero, start at zero and ramp up to that number. Um, in, this, in this case, we're going to uh, ramp up and down from one since the default setting is actually one. And you can see now as we step through it, it gets bright in the middle and then it's back to normal on the other end of the transition. Okay, I'm loving the way that looks. Click OK. And then I'm just going to do a quick render just so we can be absolutely certain it's not going to drop any frames. And here you go. Organized chaos. Pretty awesome. It's much more elegant. As chaos. Organized chaos. And there you can see it in action. I will include this transition um, on the attachments of this tutorial so that you can download it and then add it to your preset browser.